Hi, I'm Josh from Apt. If you just got a new iPad, and maybe you're new to the technology, and maybe it's a little scary how to work it, we're going to run through some of the options you have to really configure your iPad and personalize it for how you want to use it. All right, so let's jump into it. Settings. This gear icon is going to be stationed right on the front of your new iPad. Inside settings, you've got a whole bunch of features on this left column. Now, some of these features at the bottom, we're not going to discuss today, but they would be special settings for apps that you have installed. And if you want to get in there and alter it, you'd go be able to, to do that here in settings. But we're going to talk about the core stuff. Real quick here, you begin with airplane mode. If I turn airplane mode on, I got an airplane logo. I have disconnected from Wi-Fi, I have disconnected from LTE if you bought one of those. And basically right now I have no connectivity. So I can't receive any email, I can't go on the web, I can't do much in airplane mode. So let's turn that off. As a quick tip, at the very bottom, if I drag my finger from the bottom up, I pull a quick panel up. Now, there's a little logo here for the airplane because I could enter airplane mode right now. If I tap it again, it goes off, my Wi-Fi goes back on. This tool here allows me also to fl uh, flip a switch and turn on Bluetooth. I could go to do not disturb mode, which means kind of like no one's going to be bugging me with uh, uh, messages and things like that, phone calls if you have it paired up to your uh, iPhone. You have uh, the option of the uh, mute button. You've got your lock screen, which is a common curiosity. If that's turned on, I can't twist my iPad and, and have it move. It locks my screen's orientation. So if I were to twist it now, it switches. So a lot of people get confused. Why is it locked? See if that light's on. Turn it off. You're good. You also have the levels of brightness right here. You have your volume levels. You could turn on your music, fast forward, and play whatever you were playing in a recent app. And you have quick access to other programs, like your timer, world clock, and that time app. So let's go back into settings and move on. Wi-Fi is a big one. You want to connect to your home Wi-Fi when you get home. You might get a pop-up automatically that says, hey, do you want to connect to this Wi-Fi? Otherwise, you can come to settings, tap Wi-Fi, choose your wireless network, enter the password, and you're good. If you turn Wi-Fi off, then of course you will have no connectivity. Turn it on, and it'll automatically reconnect to something that you have connected to in the past. So you won't have to come here often. And that Wi-Fi logo is also right there. So it's a quick access. Otherwise, when you travel around, you enter a Starbucks and you want to join their Wi-Fi, this is where you're going to go to log on to the Internet. Bluetooth. If you have a headset device, you got Bluetooth stereo speakers. you got the new uh, Bose SoundLink Mini portable Bluetooth sound system. Here's where you're going to go to turn it on. Turn on Bluetooth. It detects all the devices around you. You would tap that icon to connect to it, and that's as simple as it is. Notifications. Sometimes notifications are annoying. We don't like them. Sometimes we love them. Here's where we control them. For example, if I drag down from the top, here's Notification Center. You can customize this, this whole system based on what you have your settings right here. For example, Messages. If someone sends me a message, I'm not going to see anything pop up on my screen. By default, it'll probably be listed at Banners, which means the iMessage pops down and I see the message. If I want to reply to it, I'll have the ability to do so. I could have alerts, which are big windows right in the middle of what I'm doing. Or I could turn it off to none. There's some other features here like badge app icon. So if I go to my home screen, take a look. Our app store has nine updates. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tap back into settings. Let's go to the main notifications, app store. Well, look at that. Badge app icon is turned off. I hate that number always glaring at me. Now you should be taking care of your stuff, so maybe that number's helpful for you. But now that I've turned it off, I don't see the number 9 bugging me anymore. Notifications has a lot of other features, and uh, you could basically exclude things from the top section where it says include. It'll end up down here in the do not include section. That's referencing what's up here. What's inside the notifications little menu on the top? Like mail still has badges turned on. I could still have banners and alerts happening. It's just that I'm not going to see my recent emails here in the notifications drop down. All right, so you've got a lot of ways to control notifications here. Control Center. We have the access on lock screen, access within apps. That's what I was talking about down here, the quick access to these little tools. So it looks like you could basically make it so you can't access it, or you can access it from lock screen, uh, which if I was in a lock screen mode, Oops, let's turn us on. I'm in lock screen. I still have access. So that's what they're talking about. Do not disturb mode. So 
Do Not Disturb mode, I would say, really is for people's iPhones because you receive lots of phone calls. Nowadays, your iPhones could be kind of tethered up with your, I your iPads because of the new iOS. So if someone calls me, I'll get the call on my iPad. If I'm in Do Not Disturb mode, that means that people aren't, aren't getting through. When enabled, a second FaceTime call from the same person can get through. So if I try to call you and you have Do Not Disturb on, it's not going to get through. But if I call you a second time, repeated calls turned on is going to break through that Do Not Disturb and work. So a lot of people, they have this little moon lit up down here. And that's, be that's because they have Do Not Disturb turned on. And a lot of questions we get are, well, how come I, I can't hear my phone? I can't hear my phone ringing. I can't hear my iPad ringing. It just goes to voicemail or things like that. Check Do Not Disturb. Turn it off. That's your problem. So you can control how that's scheduled here and working inside settings. General is a big one. The number one is listed here because we have a software update. But before we get there, about is a great place to just check things out. How much capacity do I have? What's available? Here's my serial number if I need to provide it to apt service or Apple stores. So you can learn a little bit about what's going on. To get back, let's go to general. Software updates are important. You should run your software updates all the time. If you have a software update, you're going to see that number one badge right here on settings. And that just means get over to general, choose software update, and do the installation. You should always have a backup, so make sure your iCloud backup system works. Siri, all right. Siri you can turn on, you can turn off. And then um, Hey Siri is great for like your iPhone in a car where you don't have to hold the button down to initiate Siri. You could just say the, word, the words Hey Siri and it turns on. So one thing here I'm going to point out that's pretty cool, language. All right. My favorite is English, UK, and gender. I like the lady's voice. I think it's fantastic. So you can alter what type of voice you hear. Uh, I chose a, a language that'll speak in English, but as you can see, there are languages that will be spoken to you that are not English. So you can go and customize how Siri works. And um, outside of that spotlight search, you'll have the ability to to activate your searches when you're um, like if I go to my home screen and I um, drag down a little bit here, spotlight, I could quickly search my iPad. So you can customize a little bit about how that works as far as what it's looking for. All right, so other things that are really important, handoff is a big deal, and that's what I was referencing before, where if handoff is turned on, it's really going to be kind of tethered to your other device and really talk to it. So that's a new feature. For example, let's say I'm working on a document in Pages. If handoff is turned on and I'm on the same Wi-Fi as my Mac, I could go back and forth between Mac and my iOS device and vice versa. All right, so you got a lot of other options in general. Um, as far as what's going to be really important to you, uh, auto lock never means it'll never go to sleep automatically. It's usually defaulted at about two minutes or your phone one minute. So auto lock is important for when you're not doing something or you put your device away and you haven't turned it off or hit the, the sleep button. Then it'll just automatically go to sleep. Uh, restrictions, this is for parents. Uh, you enter your code. Let's see, I don't know who uh, set this iPad up. Oh, I'm going to fail, huh? All right, I can't show you that, guys, but with uh, restrictions, that's where you can go in and say, okay, I don't want my kids using Safari. I don't want them having access to YouTube. And you basically turn things on or off. You can't restrict everything, just some of it. All right, lastly on here, let's see, is uh, real important would be reset. So reset's a big deal. Here's where you have some major options for helping you with problems. Let's say you're having an Internet issue you just can't resolve. You could reset network settings, and that'll safely reset only the network settings, and then when it reboots, you'll have to re-log on to your Wi-Fi network. Uh, your home screen layout, if it's all goofy and all your icons are way off from what it used to be and, you, and maybe you, you accidentally move something out of there and that's over here and it's, and it's all messy and you don't know where things are and you want it to default back to the regular home screen, reset home screen layout, reset, and that's it. I'm back to where I was from factory default. All the apps that I've installed are going to be on the second and third and so forth pages. So those are some features in general. Basic features down here, you have display and brightness. Again, accessible from the bottom. Wallpapers where you're going to choose your different color backgrounds. When you do so, by the way, let's say I choose a still, I want this one. I could set it on the home screen only. So where all my apps are, I'd see it. Lock screen, and you could do both. So you have the options to really mess around with what's going to get that update. All right, so you got a few more here. Sounds, this is where you could change your different types of tones. 
inside Touch ID and Passcode. This is where you set up your fingerprints on the newer devices. Uh, if you guys don't have the fingerprint scanner, you will not have this feature. Otherwise, here I can, I can add multiple fingers of my hand, my wife's hand, my kid's hand, and they all have access to really utilizing the fingerprint scanner. And you can unlock its feature for how to use it. I, want, I don't want to enter my password every time I download an app. Well, I would need that turned on. All right. As far as privacy goes, uh, this has a lot to do with uh, location services. You can go in here and, and tweak some of these options. I don't have anything set up to really show you on that privacy one. But as far as other things that are really important, iTunes and App Store, this is a big deal. In fact, the whole chunk here right in, coming up has a lot to do with your Apple ID. So iTunes and App Store, you're logged into your Apple ID, and then you'd be able to turn on automatic downloads. If you guys are sharing an Apple ID, uh, across multiple users, then uh, be cautious because if that automatic automatic um, downloads is turned on for apps and you download something, all of a sudden it'll download automatically on a bunch of other people's stuff that's sharing your, your ID. So be a little cautious. As far as Passbook and Apple Pay, this is also a new feature. And you would have to have really that fingerprint scanner to activate this. And this is where you enter your credit cards and have all your information kind of locked into, the, into your iPad. Mail contacts calendars. This is a big deal. This is where you're going to set up all your content, your, uh, your, your different email accounts that are accessible inside the Mac Mail program. So when you first open this, though, it's going to ask you to kind of the same thing. It's going to show you. Uh, I can't show you. When I add a new account, it would be the same pop up that comes up when you open up mail for the first time. And it's simple. Hey, what do you have? It'll say, do you have a Gmail account, a Yahoo account, an iCloud account? And when you enter in your credentials, it'll just all of a sudden add that account right there. And you can control mail, contacts, calendars, and how your iPad syncs. Otherwise, you've got your notes. If you have a Gmail account and an iCloud account, you'll have to choose what account you would want to be your default. So every time you make a new note, it'll go to that account. You'll have reminders on here. There's not much to do here as far as just how much is being synced through the system, your default list, because you could have different lists. Messages, you're going to log in to your iCloud or your Apple IDs. Uh, again, if you're sharing uh, an, I, an Apple ID for iTunes among your family, then you want different Apple IDs for everything else. For iCloud, Messages, you'll have your FaceTime settings listed on here, and you want a different setting for all of them. As far as other features that are going to be real important here, Safari, Search Engine, Google, you could change it. You're probably not going to mess around too much in here. Music settings, again, uh, somewhere where you're not going to really mess around with, but people ask about EQs for music. They're right here. So if you want extra bass, you can go into the bass booster for iTunes. Another one that's really important would be photos and camera. And um, if you guys have a new iPhone 6, come here and activate 60 frames per second. We don't see that here because we don't have that ability with this camera. But here's where I can go in and I can kind of tweak some of my settings for my camera. And that's the big ones on here. You've got um, iBooks can be something that's syncing content through your iCloud account. And you have uh, your Game Center settings. that. It depends if you're logged into that or not. So those are some options you have inside the settings uh, inside your iPad. Just if you had that number, you should probably run your update. So those are a lot of features built into the settings app on your new iPad. And if you want to learn more about that, we've got a lot of instructional videos at app.com.